Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lighthouse Baptist Church. Let's all take a hymnal this morning. Let's stand, please, and let's turn hymn number 185. That's 185. Hymn 185. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus. Let's sing it out to the glory of God this morning. 185. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I guess we'll uh, go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer and uh, get the service started. Dear Gracious Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this day. Thank you for allowing us to be here today. And, Father, I just pray that you'll uh, be with the service and, Lord, just uh, the fellowship. And, Father, we just uh, pray that you'll be with the message today, most importantly. And, Father, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. And uh, we'll go through a couple announcements here. Uh, first off, we've got uh, September... 12th, which is today, we got Brother Phil Buckner here with us today. Uh, glad to have him here. Uh, the pastor's out this morning. He'll be back tonight uh, uh, doing some stuff with the guards and everything. And uh, he sent us a uh, text last night and talking about how well it's going. He's able to preach a couple services yesterday and uh, all the response he got. And he's just real, real thrilled with it. Said he's tired by the end of the day, but he said it's, it's, it's a good one. Uh, also, September 19th. Uh, we're going to have the Lord's Supper that uh, Sunday night, so hopefully you can be here for that as well. Then September 25th will be our next visitation going out on Saturday. Uh, usually we meet here around 10 o'clock. If you can be here for that, uh, please let Brother Derek know. That way we know who's coming and all that and trying to get everything planned out for that as well. Uh, then October 30th, we're going to have our fall festival. Uh, we're, I guess we're going to try to do a chili cook-off. Maybe see what, who's the hottest, maybe who's the best, you know, whatever. We'll have all these different categories or something. Uh, so that'd be good. And then uh, I think we got a fire extinguisher back there, so we might need that. Uh, and then we also, uh, November 7th, we're going to have our Veterans Day service. Uh, we're going to have uh, different veterans hopefully come in, and we're going to have the color guard from the high school down here. They're going to come up and present the flags and fold them and, do all the routine, and it's going to be real nice to have them here for that. Uh, so that's going to be good. And we also got an anniversary, uh, Brother Phil, Miss Jenna. It uh, looks like they're out today, but uh, their anniversary is on September 14th. And uh, Mr. Noah Price's birthday is on September 17th. So if you see them or talk to them, you can do that. Also, I have a little letter here that the pastor forwarded on. Uh, of course, you know, we had Brother Jerry here and... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Brother Hamby. Yes, mine went blank. 
Not that I'm getting old. It just, you know, so there's so many files of Braille, I just can't find the right one. But anyway, we had them here, and uh, uh, Brother Willette actually put them up in their church uh, in a little apartment that they have over there. And so we sent the, ch the church a love offering to help pay for their air conditioning that went out while Brother Jerry was there, even though we're, we're blaming Brother Jerry for it. But now, <laughs> I hope you're watching, Brother Jerry. But anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway, it went out, so we sent him a little love offering, and he sent a response back. He said, uh, just open the check in it. What a blessing. Can't wait to read your letter to our church. Thank you so much. Please read this note or pass out appreciations along to your congregation from our members. It was a joy to host your speakers, meet and make new friends in the ministry. Praying God will continue to bless Lighthouse Baptist Church in Taylorsville. Love you all in the Lord, Pastor Vance. So that was real nice. But I think that's it. So there. So I'll take a hymn, but let's stand again. Let's turn to hymn number 211. That's 211, hymn 211. I'm happy today and the sun shines bright. Let's sing together, 211. I am happy today and the sun shines bright. The clouds have been rolled away. For the Savior said, whosoever will may come with him to stay. Whosoever surely meeteth me, surely meeteth me, oh, surely meeteth me. come forward and uh, we'll take up the offering this morning and we'll ask uh, Brother Tom would you please pray for the offering Amen stand again. Let's turn to hymn number 220. Hymn 220, Jesus is all the world to me. Let's sing together. Hymn 220. That last verse says, I'll trust him now, but I'll trust him when life's fleeting days shall end. Amen. 
That's our only way to heaven is through Him. Amen. What He did on the cross, right? Amen. Let's sing together. Hymn 220. Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without Him I would fall. When I am sad to this time we'll ask uh, brother butner come on up and uh share the message with us uh i know i've heard some good things about him uh so looking forward to this and uh brother usually they pastor and different ones when they get up and preach they try to tell a joke up at the beginning now you don't have to do that because i've already been up here so the biggest jokes are good <laughs> anyway <laughs> but we're glad to have you yes sir thank you Man. Well, it is good to be here. Oh, there's a cup holder over here. Oh, that's great. We'll just put that right in there. And uh, good to be here with you. I appreciate uh, uh, just getting to, uh, getting to know your uh, pastor, really, uh, by way of my own sons. Our sons, both of them are, uh, know uh, your pastor. And uh, the contact I've had so far is text and phone. I've not had an opportunity to meet him, so it's a uh, an honor to to be here. I appreciate him having the confidence to uh, ask me to come and turn the service over to me this morning, and I really do appreciate that, and I don't uh, take it lightly. Uh, if you would like to turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, we'll look there. I don't see a clock. Oh, there's one over there. Unfortunately, I found it. I was going to uh, kind of make a joke because I figured you you folks were out used to getting out around 12 o'clock, and since I have 10:15, that gives me plenty of time. So, uh, but unfortunately, you've you've got me pegged over there, so I'll kind of keep an eye on that clock. Man, First Peter chapter one and verse uh, eight, 
And then we'll also look at John 20. We'll turn there, or I can turn and read it uh, if you don't want to turn to that. But First uh, John, or I mean First Peter 1:8 is my text verse. Peter writing says, "Whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though now ye are, ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy." unspeakable and full of glory. And uh, the emphasis and the title of my message, we find there with the two words where, uh, where it says in the latter part of the verse, yet believing, yet believing. And I want to think about that this morning. I'll also give you uh, John 20 and verse uh, 29, also another very familiar verse. Uh, here the encounter after the resurrection and Jesus is talking to Thomas and he says, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, Thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. So let's pray, and we'll just ask the Lord to meet with us today and speak to our hearts. Father, we do thank you for the opportunity we have to gather this morning and to hear and understand better the Word of God. We pray that you will take control of the service and speak to every heart. We yield to you and trust you that uh, your will would be done in every way. Or there may be someone this morning that's struggling with this uh, concept of believing, entirely yielding themselves to you. Lord, we pray that uh, you'll help us to better understand that. Lord, that they may come to know Christ today. And for Christians, we pray that we'll be greater believers, stronger believers, and we'll understand what it all means and help us to apply it as Peter's talking about here. And Lord, we just thank you for Brother Wilkins and his work here and all that he's done to build this church to reach people for Christ. We pray that you'd be with him today as he's ministering to the soldiers. Lord, we pray that that'll, uh, there'll be some great uh, victories there and testimonies, and Lord, bring him back safely. And we thank you now again for what you're going to do. We give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, you notice in this verse, in uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 there, in verse 8, you notice that when Peter writes this and gets the thought across. Uh, there's a lot of negatives on the idea of seeing. You see it twice in there where he says, though you, they have, you have not seen, and then another time he says, uh, you see him not. So there's that, that negative thought, that negative emphasis. And when you think about it and realize, of course, since Peter had seen the Lord, that in spite of that, and though he had seen the Lord, he puts no emphasis on that at all. He didn't brag about it. He didn't uh, consider or imply that that was a lesser experience that you might have had or the people that he was writing to or would be talking to. Uh, in spite of his experience, uh, what the experience that you have and I have, that we have, it certainly is not a lesser experience. And that's an exciting thing when we really get a hold of that because Peter could have gone the other way. I, I see myself in that situation. Now, I'd want to drop names, you know, about it. I'd want to tell everybody the experience that I had had. Now, I, I got to see Jesus walk on the water and I got to see him raise the dead and I got to see him on the Mount of Transfiguration. And I'm sorry you missed all of that, but hey, you, you could get by. It wasn't that at all. He didn't even bring that up. He didn't mention anything about it. He puts the emphasis on the idea of hearing, and we'll see that as we go along, and, or believing, and believing through hearing in the Word of God. He didn't brag about his experiences, quite the opposite. And sometimes I think I, I know this is the case because I've run in it, into it too many times, how that people will think that they need some dramatic experience to really know Christ. They have to have lightning bolts, loud noises, voices from heaven, I don't know, you name it. They're always looking for something, some kind of feeling, dramatic kind of experience. And we know, if we understand the Word of God, that that is not the truth, that is not necessary, and that's not what we're to look for. Some Christians might even look at their experience and their testimony and say, well, I didn't have some of the things that someone else had, I didn't have the, uh, uh, the exciting transition in my life that somebody gives a testimony. Mine was quite different. That's not necessary. We don't have to look for experience, something earth-shaking in our life in order to 
have ourselves in a position to be in a right relationship with the Lord. And I want to bring you back with just this simple thought that Peter gave us here, the idea of yet believing. Yet believe. Vance Havner said, It is not every man's privilege to see, but it is every man's privilege to believe. It's not every man's privilege to see, but it is every man's privilege to believe. Quite a privilege to believe the Word of God and understand what God has done for us. I've heard it said, and maybe you have too. You may be talking to somebody, witnessing to them, or sharing your testimony, and they may give you something on this order. You know, if I could see Jesus, if I could just see God, and I could ask Him some questions, and I could better understand, and all of these kinds of things, then they say, if I could, if I could do that, if, there, if I could just, God would reveal Himself to me in some way, then, then I, could, I could believe. Now, I don't want to limit what God might do or could do in any situation, but I really doubt it, folks that say that. I really, even if there was some revelation to them, that they truly would believe. Because Jesus said, if you remember the story in Luke 16, the rich man in, in hell and Lazarus in, in, in heaven and paradise with God, and he begins to try to, the rich man begins to try to bargain with uh, Abraham, and he, he tries to bargain with him uh, to send uh, Lazarus back from the dead. And, and, and the statement that's made to him uh, by uh, the word of God, by Abraham there, and, and uh, the Lord himself really, it says, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. The, if, they, if they won't hear them, they wouldn't even believe if someone was raised from the dead. And so the folks that tell you that they, well, if they, somebody would be raised from the dead right before me, if I could talk to God himself, I could talk to Jesus, uh, the chances are and, uh, that they would not believe any more than they did to start with. And neither would we. We have Moses and the prophets. Now, who was he talking about when he said Moses and the prophets? Well, the first few books of the Old Testament is what he's talking about. He said they had the, the word of God. And if they won't believe that, they won't believe anything else. And that comes right down to us today. We have the Word of God. You have the Word of God. I have the Word of God. And we need to go back to the Word of God and not look for things outside of the Word of God, uh, experiences and all that goes with it that so many people are, are trying to find and say, I need something more than just the Word of God. I want to tell you, that's all you're going to get to believe. That's all you need is the Word of God. Yet believing, Peter says, that I know you haven't seen all I've seen. He didn't say this out loud, but I, I, he could have. I know you haven't had the experience that I've had. I know you haven't gone through everything that I've been through, but I want to tell you what, you believe anyway. And he was commending them for that. Yet believing, reminding us that that's all we need. And don't look for something beyond that. We'll cover this thoroughly as I get through this message, but we need not go beyond the believing of the Word of God. Some might say, if I could see heaven like Paul did. Well, let me just take you there for a minute. Now, you may have noticed this. You may have had somebody else point this out. But just in case, let me, uh, let me show you what this says here. If you look in your Bible, your King James Bible, I trust that's what you have. <laughs> Second Corinthians, you get something else, you might find something different. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2, Let's look there. He says, I knew, a, Paul is really referring to himself. He said, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up uh, to the third heaven, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into heaven or into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Notice what he said. Do you see anything in there about him, the word of God telling us that he saw anything? All I see is he heard something. He just heard. He didn't see anything. Now, maybe he did, but the Bible doesn't say anything about it. And so I just stand with the word of God. 
And so he was caught up and he says he heard. So he didn't see heaven. He didn't see anything about heaven. And I think it's significant. Sight sort of removes the element of faith. Now it doesn't mean, I, I think, uh, here's the way I feel about it. I, I think sight and faith can coexist somewhat. But if you're requiring sight, then faith is impossible. Faith just goes beyond sight. Goes without sight. And if we're one of those that says, well, if I could see it, if I could see heaven, if I could see God, if I could see Jesus, if I could see things like that, then I would believe. No, no, I, I, I beg to differ. Because the Word of God says it is by faith, by what we hear, and that hearing is through the Word of God. And we gain our faith through the Word of God, and we gain it by hearing, not seeing. Don't look for something to see. Don't look for some experience that you can behold, look at, know about, uh, because that's getting into sight and it will go beyond faith. And so then when I think too about how that, uh, if you really were in Paul's experience, I guess you'd have to have been stoned and left for dead if you're really going to go through the full experience that he had. None of us would want that. What we'd like to do is to have a plane ride to heaven, you know, get off, take a tour, and uh, get back on the plane, fly back in first class. And whatever experience Paul had, he had to be, <laughs> been left for dead in order to go through that experience. And I don't think most people want that. There's a lot of books, a lot of teaching out today. And most of the books that you'll see, or you can, you can buy them online, they've made movies out of some of them about somebody that went to heaven, uh, children that had some experience, talked to Jesus, came back with a report. Now, pardon me, I don't want to be too critical of all of this, but I've not read any of those. I don't know exactly what they're do, doing and saying, but I've heard enough about it to know that they have to set aside the plain teaching of the Word of God to make any, a lot of this so. And so I, I take all of that with a grain of salt, as we used to say, quite skeptical, skeptical about uh, what they're saying and trying to teach, and actually I think it's a money-making deal. But anyway, don't get caught up in the television, pop culture, religion of our day. Just, just don't pay any attention to that. Don't look for something. That's, that's, what, that's what I find people gravitating. Why do they gravitate to that? Why are people interested in that? Because they're looking for something that they can see beyond what the Word of God says. Yet believing the Word of God is what we need. That's all we need. And if we can nail that down, we don't have to get into all of this extra stuff that's out there that uh, I'll just give them the benefit of the doubt and say may or may not be true. I have my own opinions about it all, but whatever it is, uh, be careful about it because remember, the uh, devil, Satan, can recreate a lot of this. Look at the second right over just a little bit. If you're still in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13, it says, For such are, and it's talking about uh, some bad folks, and it says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to to the works. So what we find out about the Word of God is that there is the capability of those to look like light, but they really belong to Satan's crown. Right. We need to be very careful about that. Even, even Pharaoh's magicians, if you remember the story there in the Old Testament, uh, they were able to come before, when Moses was before Pharaoh, they were able to duplicate the first three miracles that Moses did in the presence of the Pharaoh. Of course, beyond that, they were uh, out, outclassed, but uh, the first three, they were able to duplicate that. Now, when I look at this idea of herd that we see in this context, and the use of the word herd here, it's, uh, it reminds me of Romans ten seventeen that says, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How do we get faith? The word of God. We hear the word of God. That's how, that's how the Bible says that we get it. it. It's from hearing the Word of God. That's how faith is, comes initially at salvation. That's how our faith grows. 
is getting into the Word of God. I cannot overemphasize the importance of the Word of God, the Bible, and the right kind of Bible, too. Amen. And we, we need the Bible. We need the Word of God. No sight really necessary at all. We don't have to have sight. We don't have to have something proven. We just believe the Word of God. God gave it to us, and we understand. We believe it by faith. If He decides to reveal something beyond that, well, so be it. But probably not in most instances. We have to go with the Word of God. I like the fact that when we think about faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, I think it's really something that medical science has determined that a person, even in a coma, can sometimes hear. And they say one of the last things to go as a person is passing away is their hearing. You can still talk to them. They may not, it may not look like they're hearing anything. It may not look like they're recognizing. But just think about that. You could still give somebody the word of God in a coma. You could witness to somebody in a coma. You could tell them about Jesus while they're in a coma. Why is that? Because they can still hear. God has kept their hearing intact because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing to think about. Yet believing our faith through the Word of God. Well, the second thing that I want to look at along this line, I keep making something go. I have a real knack for making weird noises with these. Uh, let me put this over here and see if I can switch this around. It may not be bothering you as much as it is me, but I keep hearing a little banging noise that I think I'm creating. Am I not doing that? I think I'd be better like that. All right, I'll try that. Second thing, don't demand a vision. You know, there were only three that saw Moses and Elijah and the glory of God on the Mount of Transfiguration. But all the disciples walked with the Lord in the valley. Those three are the only ones that saw all of that. We have it recorded in the Word of God so we can know about the experience, but it was only those three that were there. I've, I've heard folks glorying in a vision that they say was from God. And then you find others seeking a similar vision or some kind of vision, almost in desperation. I need a vision. No, you've got the Word of God. You've got all the revelation that God is going to give us. Now, if He decides to go beyond that one area, this area, somebody else, that's fine. God can do, and He does that. I know occasionally that happens. But we're not to seek such. That's not something we go after. That's not something we're trying to get, trying to find, because we have the revelation that we need right here. And we'll just stay with that. Now, if God chooses to give you a little extra, that's up to God. But uh, we oughtn't expect it. Even in Bible times, think about this. Some saw visions, most did not. Some saw or experienced miracles, most did not. Some spoke in tongues, most did not. Some heard the Lord speak publicly, preach and pray, most did not. There are some things we just don't get to see beyond what we can see in the Word of God. God gave us all we need right here. And Peter is sort of saying here, he said, because most did not is why he is saying, yet believing. Because it's faith. They trusted by faith. They, they were believing. Are you a believer this morning? I hope so. You're not looking for something else, are you? You've got the Bible. You've got the Word of God. You've got the promises before you. But in this, this world of touchy-feely stuff, we're always looking for something else if we're not careful or somebody's trying to get us. So they're telling you about it. You'll talk to somebody and they'll say, boy, oh, man, the, the Spirit came down and everybody got wild and jumped over pews and rolled in the floor and spoke in weird languages. And you say, man, am I missing something? No, you're not missing anything. Now, sometimes... We Baptists might get a little excited, nothing wrong with that. We might hold up our hand and shout hallelujah. But we're looking for something beyond 
the truth and the experience that we get from the faith in the revealed Word of God, then we've, we've gone beyond what, beyond what God wants us to do. We believe. So don't demand a vision. Secondly, don't, or thirdly, I guess it is, don't seek signs and wonders. It's along the same line, but let, just let me give you a little something else here. In, in John chapter 4, in verse 48, John 4, in verse 48, some interesting things. The Lord said himself, this uh, mad nobleman came to him about a sick uh, child, and, uh, and Jesus just said this to him. It's kind of interesting how he just sort of out of nowhere and why there must be more to it than is written in the scripture, but he says, except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. He was trying to get a message across to him evidently. And maybe he was giving that kind of uh, indication in terms of the way he made the request and what he was kind of expecting. And Jesus said to him, you're not going to believe or the way you're, way you're approaching this, I'll, I'll just sort of add this. I think this is kind of in line with what's going on here. The way you're approaching this, unless you see some sign and wonder, unless you see it yourself, you're not going to believe it. It must have hit the nobleman just right because I like what happened down in verse 50 when Jesus said to him, Go thy way, thy son liveth, and the man believed the word. Somehow between verse 48 and 50, he got where we're talking about today. He said, I'm just going to believe. I don't necessarily have to see anything. Believe the word that Jesus said it, and he went his way. It's kind of interesting, too. As you, I haven't got time to deal with all these passages, but he goes on to talk about how uh, he, he checks the time of when it happened and found out that it was happening the next day and all these kinds of things. There's a message. I've got a message I preach on this. And so don't get me started on it because I'll have to preach that one too. And we will be here to one o'clock. But uh, Jesus told him, basically, don't seek signs and wonders. Just believe. And he did. And that made the difference. And when we think also along the lines of this not seeking, and I certainly don't have time to deal with everything in this regard, but we do have, and I've sort of referred to this already, but... There are some groups and individuals that would have you believe that proof of salvation rests in the supernatural manifestation of miracles and healings and tongues and all sorts of things. And if you don't have this, then you don't have salvation. And there's a theological term that applies to that. It's baloney. <laughs> I'm not sure what the Greek word is for that, but that's, that's all that is. And I just, I, I really... Uh, you know, it's just believing, yet believing. That's what we need to do. That's what's necessary. But, you know, on the other hand, now let me just give you the other hand here for just a minute. Really, the Christian life ought to be a daily experience of miracles. I said, I'm not contradicting myself. Stay with me here. <clears throat> Many would call them coincidences. We've got lots of what we sometimes refer to as coincidences, don't we? Somebody said a coincidence is a miracle when God chooses to remain anonymous. And I really believe that. I've had people say, I just don't believe there are any coincidences. It's just, and it may be true. And all of those things that we think are coincidences, God just worked it out, but he didn't make a big deal out of it. We just have to believe he's behind the scene, taking care of the situations and circumstances. Now, <laughs> God sends a major supernatural miracle your way. Just rejoice and thank God for it. He does that from time to time. He will do that. We're just not to always be expecting it. We just trust Him day to day. The coincidences He takes care of. And sometimes there will just be a big whopper comes our way. Well, we can just rejoice. But don't go around. Uh, be like Peter said, oh, yeah, God took care of that, but... Really, the thing we just need to do is trust Him. We just need to believe. And don't, you know, this may ha this happened for me. It may not happen for you. And don't get proud in our the, the things that God does in our experiences. All right to give that testimony 
and rejoice in it so others can see God working. But we need to realize that it is the believing in the Word of God that is what is so important. He does miracles all the time. <clears throat> I was thinking there's a song that under other circumstances my voice feels like it's already about to quit. So I'm not going to going to try to sing it this morning, but uh, it's a, 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 I can't even talk, much less sing, Squire Parsons song that you may be familiar with, The Greatest of All Merits. You may have heard that song. And uh, let me think, see if I can think of some of the words. He said, I, I, uh, I wasn't there on the shores of Galilee where Jesus touched those blinded eyes and made them see. I, I didn't see the empty tomb, but yet I believe. And he says, because I know what he gets to, he says, I know what Jesus has done for me. And in the chorus, it's, it even says that. The greatest of all miracles was when Jesus saved me. Amen. Hallelujah. What other miracle do you need? We run around looking for miracles. Hey, if you're saved, you've had the big one. You can't top that. And we shouldn't look for anything else. Just constantly rejoice in the miracle that God did in our life by saving us, putting us on the path to heaven and to glory one day, giving us a home more like heaven right now. I know it's not perfect down here. Uh, the circumstances in our own lives, the circumstances in our country, in our day, uh, it's frustrating a little bit. But isn't it, isn't it great to just rejoice in the fact to know that we have a home in glory that, and God has prepared for us himself. And one of these days, he's either coming back, and I believe, you know, of course, we, it's been the last days since New Testament times, but this looks like the last of the last days. <laughs> and I believe he's coming back just any time. But if he doesn't, and we're taken out, we'll be with him. And, and we ought to go through life rejoicing in that fact. And though there may be some tough times, some tough decisions, some experiences that we, we have to go through, we know that God has done a great miracle in our life. He saved us, changed us, and prepared us for heaven. And one day we'll be there with Him. I, I, if you're saved and know it, you really don't need anything beyond that. No other miracles, no other supernatural manifestations, nothing else. Though God may give you some. But don't look for him. Yet believing, just trust him. Oh, I, I was thinking. Uh, I uh, uh, I have uh, just about a year or so ago, year year and a half now. Um, I, I got to having some trouble with my eye, and I uh, I went to the eye doctor, and they sent me to specialists, and they end up I end up with macular degeneration, in my left eye. And I, I, uh, I always tell this because I like to get a sympathy everywhere I can, you know. <laughs> I need it. My wife won't give me any sympathy. She says, I got some trouble too, you know. But, uh, but I, I qualified for a program. I go to Nashville once a month. And uh, I go down and I get a shot in my eye. I always like to tell that because I like to watch the reactions. <laughs> I could just tell that around my older son, and he just starts, oh, 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 Dad, I don't like thinking about it. It's really not as bad as it sounds, but it isn't it didn't any fun. It isn't something I would recommend for entertainment. And, uh, but I, I get this shot every month. It's an experimental uh, vaccine-type thing that's supposed to help it or make it better. You really can't cure it, but uh, uh, anyway, I think it is helping. But I, I tell you all of that because it's part of an illustration I wanted to, to use to show you about this idea what a miracle salvation is. Because this is a pretty special deal for them. Turns out it is for me too because they send a limousine up to Bowling Green from Nashville and they pick me up and I ride in the back, you know, just like the president or somebody. <laughs> Wave to people as I go down the road. <laughs> And uh, I got a driver, and he's all got a tuxedo on and all this. They're real stiff-looking people. And it's a, I don't, I don't know what the neighbors think where we live. Nobody's ever said anything about it. That every month they bring me back. And nobody else from Bowling Green. 
And uh, <laughs> then uh, I had different drivers, so it's a limousine service that they hire to do this. And I have different uh, drivers. But one, one week, a few, few months ago, uh, I got in, there's a man in there I'd, I'd never had before. They had a hat on, and he looked old. I thought, for heaven's sake, this old man driving me down there. I, and then later on, I found out he's the same age I am. <laughs> so he wasn't as old as I thought. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, he got immediate, almost immediately got to talking to me, <laughs> asking me questions about things and went right almost into a witness, a testimony. Uh, before I, I haven't had any chance to say much of anything. And uh, he got to telling me about his... Uh, his, his life and what had happened. I forgot how we initiated the entire conversation, but he got to talking about uh, how he had, his life had been. His name was Dennis Hughes. He gave me permission to share this testimony. I asked him if I could use this. I said, it's such a tremendous testimony. He said, yes, you, you're welcome to tell anything you want. And uh, he said uh, he, he was a lawyer and an alcoholic. He said he, he drank constantly, uh, so much he lost his business, he lost, and a womanizer, he said, was that lost his family. He said he would drink so much that he would, would fall down, couldn't even get up. And sometimes he said he would just cry to try to beg, and he said, I begged God, though I had no relationship with him and reason to, I begged him to just I, to take that away from me. He said, I'd cry, cry because I couldn't quit drinking, just drank all the time. And he said, I had a, my brother was a Christian and a friend. And they said they, he, they continued to get after him and stay after him. And they said, then he said, when I was 53 years old, he's 70, would be, let's see, 76 now. And he said, when I was 53 years old, I turned my life over to Christ. I got saved and... He said, I haven't touched a drop since. And he said, I witness for him everywhere I go. That's, he initiated it with me. He done a far better job of getting the witness started than I ever could with anybody. But he was, he was um, because he'd already asked me if I, oh yeah, I'm saved. I told him I was a Baptist preacher and you know, kind of got in with the flow, though I was a little late coming in. And <laughs> he... he uh, he, he, kept, he just told me how all the, the things that God had done for him and how it changed. I said, never, never drunk a drop since he was 53 years old. Never touched it. And uh, not only that, I, I, then I got to ask him, I said, I said uh, <coughs> you, 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 where do you go to church? You're test he said, because they, you go somewhere in Nashville? And he said, no, I live in Knoxville. Now, in Knoxville, he said, you go, where do you go to church over there? And he said, well, it's a, it's a church up in Powell. Oh, I said, really? I said, where? And he said, it's called Temple Baptist Church. I said, no kidding. And I told him I'm, I'd been there. And you know about Temple, I said, Crown College, where your pastor went to college, where our son graduated from, our younger son graduated from there, where your former pastor graduated from there, Clarence Sexton's the pastor. And he said, I go there. And I said, that. and we talked about that. And he said, he said I, I teach a Sunday school class. And I said, this is getting better all the time. This man who was, he, he said, he used the word, he said, I was nasty. That's the word he used in his testimony. He said, I was nasty. My life was terrible. I was horrible. And, and he said, and I teach a Sunday school. I said, really? He said, it's a men's class, old, sort of older men's class. He said, and we rotate. He said, Clarence Sexton is in there. I said, I can't even believe this. Here's a man who was a despicable, drunk, womanizer. Everything you could think was, had gotten saved. And now he was teaching a Sunday school class at Temple Baptist Church and Clarence Sexton was in the class sometimes. They rotated teachers. But I mean, I thought, man, hallelujah. Now, there's a miracle for you. That's the kind of miracles God does. That's the kind of miracles God does wants to do in more lives than we realize. If we'd have, if a faithful brother or a faithful friend would just keep after somebody that looks like a hopeless case 
that would never come to Christ just keep on, tr- keep on witnessing, keep on being a friend, keep on trying to get their life right. Sometimes we give up on people too soon. What a miracle that was. And that's the kind of miracles I think God wants us to look for. And he'll do those. That was one of those great miracles. Has God delivered you from anything? If you're saved, he's at least delivered you from hell. He's delivered you from hell. What a deliverance that is. Sometimes we get to thinking that, you know, something, I I dare say everybody in this room has used this expression one time or the other, maybe a lot of times. I didn't deserve that. Somebody did something to you. Somebody said something to you. Something happened at work. Your boss did this. Your coworker did that. Your family member did this or that or the other. I didn't deserve that. Look what all I've done. Look what all I've done. But I didn't deserve that. Listen, none of us in this room deserve anything but hell. If we could ever get a hold of that and just realize that you deserve hell, I deserve hell, anything we can get above that is just bonus. It'd make a lot of difference in how we live our lives and the humility that we ought to have in our life, realizing we don't deserve anything. Because God did such a miracle in our life to change us, put us on the path to heaven. I trust God has delivered you from a lot of things, but mostly he's just given us a home in heaven, and we'd rejoice in that. And I am running out of time, but I had one other thing, and I'll just say this and sort of skip over it. You can look into it yourself if you want to. Don't seek the health and wealth. That's the wrong reason to seek God. See, sometimes we hear, well, you ought to get saved, and God will bless you and give you and give to get and all those nonsense. It'll just be a life of material blessings. Of course, that's not biblical. I haven't got time to deal with all that. You can look in John 6, 26, 27, see some things about it, but it, it's not, it's not to, we, we should not seek the Lord uh, so that we can get a lot of things and have a lot of blessings. Now, we may have them. God blesses us all the time, but that's not the reason that we come to Him. So don't seek that. Yet believe. You might ask in the midst of all this, what about repentance? Charles Spurgeon said, true belief and true repentance are twins. I really believe that. I was a lot of talk about it, and people have different beliefs on the idea of repentance. But when we truly believe, we truly change our mind, which uh, repentance has that concept of going one way, turning and going the other. We change our minds then, and change our direction, then that begins a growth process. And we become more of what God wants us to be. Sometimes God changes us immediately like Dennis Hughes. I mean, a radical change that was very obvious to him and to everybody else. Now, everybody may not be that way. Sometimes we change, we still have a lot of problems along the way, but there's a growth process. It's, it's not, not so much... Um, somebody said it was not so much uh, destination as it is direction in this idea of salvation. What direction is someone going? You know, we can be saved and know the Lord and then get, kind of get going the wrong direction. Doesn't mean we lost our salvation, but we're still not where we ought to be. But uh, a new, uh, new child in Christ comes in, they might not have all of the, you know, they don't understand all of the things that they're to do and not to do or should do, and they may not look right or dress right or smell right or act right or any of the things you want to put in there, but listen, if they've trusted the Lord and they've started on that path, they've got a direction. Get them in the right direction, they'll find their way. And God will help along the way. What we need to do is be sure that we're helpers and not hinderers in some of those situations. But sometimes it does take a while to get us. You know that little song, God's Still Working on Me. I don't know about you, but I'm 76, be 77 a month or two here, but God's still working on me. I find myself lacking in a lot of areas. And though I've been in the ministry 50 years, He's still working on me and reminding me of things that I, I need to do, need to change, need to do better. 
and need to uh, work at. 1 John 5.13, I'll just close with this verse. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Notice that yet believing in that verse. It's the believing. Yet believing. Let's bow for prayer. And again, I ask you, are you a believer this morning? Have you trusted Christ? Are you believing in the truth of the word of God? Have you, have you applied that to your heart? Have you asked him to come into your heart and save you? Do you know for 100% sure that if you die today, you go to heaven? If you're not sure of that this morning, we're going to have an invitation in just a minute. And I hope you'll come and get it settled today. Maybe you've made a profession and still have some doubts. Maybe you've been influenced about some of the things like I've talked about today and you've been looking for something beyond the simple faith of salvation. And you have questions about that. I'm sure, I know I'd be glad to help and I'm sure there are others who can take the word of God and help you with this. Now Christian, where are you on your path? Has God done anything for you? Has God worked anything out in your life? Are you rejoicing in your salvation? Do you see Him working on a daily basis? I trust that you are. Is there something that you need to recommit to Him? Do you need to get back on the path, going in the right direction? Whatever decision it is, we're going to pray in just a minute, and then we'll sing or the music and however we do it. And if you need to come, you come to this old-fashioned altar and get that settled this morning. I trust you will do that. Father, we thank you for these great folks. Thank you for the liberty I felt in being able to preach here. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, take control of this invitation time. And if there's someone this morning that needs to make a decision for you, they'd not hesitate to do it, whether it's public or there in the pew. Lord, especially if there's someone this morning that's unsure of where they're going to spend eternity. Help them to realize that Jesus died for them and if they'll trust him, he will save them today if they just simply call him. Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I trust that that will be a reality in the lives of someone this morning. And now, Lord, we pray that you'd take control of this invitation time and you'll work in our midst and we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.